Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to the second part uh, of the exercise about uh, uh, our simple uh, reactive application. Um, the goal for today is to uh, take over from the exercise we did last week uh, in which we uh, planned the component design and uh, try to uh, add all the dynamic behavior, all the state and the form behavior into the application and that will be also um, uh, a way of trying to understand better which can be the design principles in react um, what i could say and that we'll have <laughs> to repeat many times in many points here is that uh, designing uh, in react uh, it means mainly in many cases uh, uh, trying to um, refactor many times uh, uh, the the information that you add uh, the position of the state the position of the props uh, that you have in your application so very often when we are trying to add some functionality we need to move uh, uh, some information down or up uh, from a component to another in order to to get the flow of data uh, as we as we want and uh, as we need it um, so don't be uh, afraid of uh, going over the choices that you made in the previous version and try to rearrange them it's very difficult to get the state uh, right in the first place uh, and uh, and uh, what what i will tell you it's already the the, the end point uh, of uh, several maybe trials and errors that they made during the development of this exercise um, and so what we won't have time to to go through all the process and try to comment uh, the final result and the the ideas that went behind them and, uh, and the rationale that went behind it, some choices um, but uh, be sure that uh, uh, you will never be able uh, to to get it right the first time so don't worry try to start from a working functional application without state like we are and adding state adding behavior one piece at a time and as you keep on adding information and adding behavior you will find yourself that you need to move some uh, some functionality or some information from one component to the other it's perfectly normal this is the process that we are expecting to do uh, in, in this kind of development so let's just uh, uh, do a, a quick uh, reminder uh, we had uh, last week uh, uh, this application that will sh did, did show some uh, uh, some uh, exams uh, and had already some uh, placeholders for various type of uh, interactive elements like uh, the, the edit button the delete button for an exam and the plus button that would open a form for uh, editing or for inserting new exams of course uh, in this application nothing is working it's only well, at least the the static rendering part is working but no no dynamic behavior is really um, implemented the, the buttons do, don't do anything the form doesn't do anything and so on and, um, and just to to recall what we did i try to uh, summarize uh, the structure of the application in uh, in this diagram uh that we can uh, a bit also zoom over uh, so it's some, something a bit more polished a bit more uh a bit cleaner than what we had in the slides uh, last week uh where i took uh, the different components and for every component uh, i listed the properties that this component is um, is receiving so uh, in this case uh, the exam score component uh, has a property called exams and of course this means that this property as being given to this exam scores component by by its parent component in this case app mm -hmm. and um, so the, we i didn't list the, com the properties on the arrows uh, but I, I chose to list them on the receiving component because it's uh, it's easier we don't have a lot of clutter on these arrows but of course if you see some prop inside a component uh, this component has been computed by the father element and has been uh, given passed to the co to the lower component through some um, attribute some component attribute and so on uh, so I, i'm just uh, here reported what uh, what we had in our in our previous version so it's uh, exactly the code that we are already running uh, from the um, uh, from the graphical point of view uh, i use this sort of a, a component arrow so i borrowed some notation from uml even if this is not really uml um, for uh, indicating composition so it means that an exam table uh, in, uh, includes many exam rows so exam rows uh, uh, is, is a multiple value 
that uh, uh, composes the uh, a single exam table now, and this also justifies the difference between the, the exams property in the plural that exam table receiving and the single exam that uh, each uh, exam row is receiving hmm? uh, so we have uh, uh, the exam table that will generate many exam rows in this application i think this is the only place uh, where we are creating a list of components hmm? uh, we also have something inside the form but uh, then they will just be a list uh, of uh, um, of um, of elements of, of simple uh, dom elements and this is the kind of, uh, of of code that we had last week everything is in place for propagating information uh, but no i, I would say the no behavior is, is given um, we had some state variable here in the exam table because we assume that uh, uh, the of course uh, this table would uh, need uh, to um, to manage its own list of exams but uh, uh, we are not really managing the state in, sen in the sense that uh, in these classes we are not modifying any of the state mm, uh, information okay so this was the let's say an overview of what we had last week we had a, the, the top level application we was practically empty uh, it, had, it had nothing to do except just to uh, instantiate the three main components and pass some uh, properties to them the, these properties were always the exam the list of exams the list of courses and the mode of the application just remember the mode is uh, edit uh, or view or add uh, depending on what kind of actions <laughs> is required and uh, depending on the mod uh, property uh, the different parts of the application will render or not for example in view mode the form will not render hmm? in add or edit mode the form of course will render and um, and so on so uh, we may switch uh, to the to the new version hmm? so i it's already uh, uploaded so i can switch directly to the new with state with the branch which is called the uh, with state uh, and uh, we can try to rerun the application the new one just to see the differences uh, so let's first uh, proceed with a simple demo of the functionality and then we'll go into the organization okay we see that the application is starting in uh, in um, view mode since we are viewing the list uh, and we have all the different uh, widgets available uh, for example we can delete some uh, exam by clicking on the on the trash bin icon so i'm trying to delete the software engineering exam because i don't like the score so I, by clicking on this uh, button the exam will just disappear hmm? uh, I, I want to insert it again so i click on the plus button and we see that the plus button and also all the other action icons are, are deleted are sh not shown anymore um, just because uh, when the form is open we don't want uh, uh, or we don't need uh, to be able to activate other controls and uh, so we want to insert software engineering again maybe with a better score and this time we get uh, 27 and if we try to insert it uh, well for example we give a, a we get a, a, an error because we forgot to insert a, a date so there's also some, a bit of validation into this uh, into this form so maybe you can insert date of today hmm? and we, if i click on to insert of course a new course will be inserted here while if i uh, pop, pop up the form and then I click cancel nothing happens okay uh, the the other functionality that we have here is the functionality for editing of course so for example i want to edit uh, the score of web application one so i click on the edit icon and i see that the the, the form is shown again this time with the um, the um, drop down menu is, is locked i cannot change it because of course i asked to edit one specific course so i cannot change the name of the course uh, the, the 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 drop down menu is there but it is disabled so you cannot modify it and i can give myself uh, a better score for example if i click on modify just was the number 24 here when i click modify it will immediately jump to 28. Hmm? so this is the structure the basic functionality um, of, the, of the application and now we can try you know, to to reason about how to get uh, this behavior uh, in in our uh, in our example in our code so for doing that uh, i prepared a much uh, uh, more complete uh, diagram 
uh, with the components and the properties of these components in the final version of, of the application of course uh, i didn't draw this uh, uh, before in the implementation i first implemented and then i, I try to report the information here so it's not something that we can do just on paper and then hope that everything is right you have to work with code and then uh, try to keep your mind uh, uh, focused on what are the, the main um, information um, first of all just a note about the the, the notation uh, i used uh, uh, so, sort of classes similar to uh, to uml classes for for drawing the, these pictures uh, and they have two, two types of elements one is uh, just we with one slot you see for example this exam table as the title and the slot uh, containing some properties and the other components have the three slots so the title uh, and two different boxes uh, these are for class uh, components component de declared as classes that of course also manage a state um, the general rule for this diagram no, it's, just not, it's not a, it's not a standard it's something just uh, I made up for, for clarity is that uh, uh, in the top part uh, we have the properties defined by the class itself and so they would be state properties or they could be methods uh, of the class defined in the class why in the bottom component or in the only component for the other functional components of the uh, components declared as functions we all we only have uh, uh, information that is given from the outside so you see that there are only just props so the props uh, are always in the bottom part or in the only part of the classes and uh, uh, the own properties uh, uh, so state and methods are in the top part of, of the diagram hmm? so this is the, the the added notation and also you can notice that some of these properties or some of these uh, um, variables have uh, um, um, parentheses among them and they put them also in italics so they are more uh, they stand out uh, more easily and they are functions in this case so we have properties of type object and uh, properties of type function and also here we have uh, uh, items of type object and the items uh, of type functions which is actually a class met class uh, methods of the class instances so this is the notation that we have um, what we notice uh, immediately maybe at the first time is that uh, the app component uh, was empty before uh, here we have it uh, you see initially it was empty and now in the in the new version it's uh, uh, it is a lot of uh, uh, information and overall we see a lot of more properties uh, and functions uh, uh, all over the diagram so how can we uh, reason about that how can we um, get oriented about what happened here well first of all um, the the main uh, the main choice here was to think about the state okay um, there are some information that is uh, dynamic may change uh, and in this case for example the list of exams uh, is the main uh, dynamic information and my main question is where do i put what is the component that is best suited uh, to contain the list uh, of all the exams hmm? uh, given that uh, uh, and the this list of exams uh, is uh, should be made available to uh, many other components of course uh, they should be available to the exam row data because it needs to show uh, the information about the exams but it also needs to be available for example to the exam form because uh, when I want to edit an exam I need uh, to have information about that exam hmm? and so uh, this information must be available in some way uh, for all the components and so I put that uh, that state uh, into the top level component in my application so it's not always like, like this maybe in some cases or some part of the state will be <coughs> in a lower component but for the moment uh, i put the state uh, the exam the list of exams uh, which is a part of the state in the app mode uh, if we compare it with uh, what we thought when we did the work last week uh, we had put the, the exams uh, into exam table hmm? but then because i thought that it was the only information that i needed uh, the only place where i needed it because i only needed it for for displaying the table 
actually when i implemented the form i realized that uh, in the form i need to modify the state so when i insert a new a new exam i need to modify the state i need to add a new uh, item to the list and uh, if the list is here uh, it cannot be reached from the form in any way so i had to move the state up to a common ancestor to a common father that could be reached by both uh, components so the first idea is uh, uh, i have uh, i decide that the list of exams is a state information and this is stored into the app component second i must uh, uh, define the operations that i can do onto that uh, state onto that information what can i do on the state well i can add a new exam i can modify an existing exam i can delete an existing exam and if i want to be able to perform these three operations the only component that may actually implement this functionality is the component itself so uh, the state is uh, more can be modified only by the very same component where it is declared and so uh, that's why i had to define into the app uh, two methods uh, one is called add or edit exam and the other is called delete exam these two methods uh, are for managing for handling the exams part of the state of the application um, so maybe we, we may have a look at this part and uh, we, there are of course other state information for example the list of courses the list of courses is of course dynamic because i have to load it from the database in some way but it won't be modified it cannot be modified by the application and so after the initial loading uh, you don't need uh, any method here you see that there are no methods here that deal with the courses the other piece of state is mod uh, mod with together with the, uh, the editing exam are deciding what the application is still is now offering viewing editing or adding and uh, there are other three methods here for managing that part of the state uh, but we'll see that later let's focus first on the on the exams hmm? so i open the code here for the uh, app uh, class for the app component and what we see is that uh, the state is initialized in the constructor of course hmm? uh, the initialization of state and the definition of the state usually belongs to the constructor but we see that the state in the constructor is initialized uh, with empty values hmm? in the constructor we don't know yet uh, uh, which are the, very, uh, the, the information that we need. Uh, we need to load them from a remote database, from a remote API, and this will be an asynchronous operation. And uh, in the constructor, we have to assign uh, uh, something immediately, and uh, we, can, we cannot wait for asynchronous completion because we cannot call set state, for example, inside the constructor. Hmm? So usually we initialize the state with default values, with empty values, and we delay the loading of uh, the initial value of the state uh, to a second moment and as we saw in the in the slides about the component life cycle the best place where to put the loading of the initial state or an, in general a remote call to an api is in the component did mount uh, method so the, the the component the app component is being constructed with an empty state and later after it's uh, it's rendered and has been it has been mounted all the application has been mounted into the dom uh, we launch these apis mm -hmm. so i'm assuming that uh, uh, the information about the exams and about the courses comes from an api that will get information from a remote uh, uh, source so the remote api server and uh, so i implemented this as a promise uh, so uh, get exams will return a promise and when this promise is fulfilled uh, the, it will give me the list of exams that i need and at, at this point i will update the state by setting the exams property to the list of exams that i just received into my promise and the same for the list of courses another api call that will give me a list of courses when the uh, promise is fulfilled so when the request is completed i have the list of courses and i will update the state with this new list uh, of courses which is now available um, this is happening asynchronously so sooner or later uh, this uh, method will call set state 
and the app component will re-render itself of course we'll call the render method again and uh, also the children component will render again with the new value of the state uh, there are these are two um, asynchronous components asynchronous calls uh, so uh, they we don't know in advance uh, which one will finish first in which order these operations will be done but since they are on different portions of the state they are, there is no conflict among them so sooner or later this component will have uh, the right state and then we are offering methods for manipulating the state uh, the easy one is for example delete exam hmm? uh, delete exam is the method that we, we we will provide to our children component uh, to delete an exam of course uh, i am the only uh, component that is able to call set state uh, on the exam and so i, I need to offer the others uh, the possibility of uh, uh, updating the state uh, by deleting an item for example uh, this is a possibly uh, a possible implementation of the delete exam it's a function that uh, receives an exam as a parameter and uh, uh, later on will update the state uh, uh, by deleting the, the, the exam that I specified uh, as a parameter. Uh, first, uh, we must notice how we write uh, this method. We use the uh, arrow syntax uh, so that we don't have any problem with the interpretation of this inside uh, the function body. If we choose to implement this function with a function keyword instead of the arrow function, we should remember to bind the function in the constructor. Otherwise, uh, th this uh, will not work inside this body. But with arrow function, we usually don't have any problem. And the second is that the set state is called by passing uh, an arrow function again. So it's not the value of the state that we are passing, but it's a, we are passing a function, a callback that will update uh, the, the state. Uh, this uh, we already discussed that uh, uh, last week uh, is the, um, the mandatory way of the updating the state whenever the new state uh, depends on the old one so if you are uh, computing the new value of the state uh, starting from the previous value you must use the functional notation so that uh, we are you are not missing any modifications otherwise if you are setting the state using information that comes from the properties or from other sources but not from the state itself well at that point you may also construct the object and uh, and, uh, and set it there okay uh, so what does uh, the arrow function do it will construct a new object in this case a new array with a new content that we want to replace the old one so we are not really deleting an item but we are constructing a new array by copying all the element except the one that we want to delete uh, to delete hmm? and so this is implemented if you look at the code with the filter operation so uh, a state is the old value of the state we take state.exams which is the list of exams and we apply the, the filter method for for filtering all the element ex except those element whose uh, course code is different from the course code of the exam here that we want to delete so we are uh, really constructing you remember that filter will return you a new array will not modify the array in place so we are returning a new array that is a, a real copy of the previous one except from one row that has been excluded eh? so again it's uh, it's not really deleted by i rebuilding something that doesn't contain an element and i replace it in the state so this is the normal way of uh, doing this kind of state manipulations um the same is a bit more complex uh, the other method is uh, r or add or edit exam where you want to add a new exam and possibly if there was already an exam with the same code i would replace it uh, with the new one so actually what i'm doing is first i'm deleting a course uh, if there is already a course with the same code and if there is no course with the same code this filter will just make a copy of the whole array of exams otherwise it will make a copy of the array without one element i save it into one state this build state is the state the new state that, I, that i'm building um, and it's uh, it's not the state variable it's a copy of it hmm? remember we are still always in the callback here hmm? in the callback function so i deleted the previous exam if it was present 
and uh, uh, now I can add the new one so I can push to the exam uh, and add it at the end and modify this array Usually we suggest to use com, uh, concatenate concat uh, for uh, modifying the state, but in this case we are not. I'm not modifying the state. I'm just modifying my build state variable. So it's possible to uh, use method and modify the array. Otherwise, a concatenate method will create a new array, and so it's safer because it will not. It will never modify the initial array. And then I will uh, resort the, the the state by. Uh, by date because the default order that they want to see and finally i will uh, return the new uh, state to be updated so the exams component will need to be replaced with this new array that i built that i just built without uh, one course plus one new course hmm? um, so these basically are methods uh, that are focused on the kind of modifications we can do on this uh, state.exams, on this component of the state. Okay, well, in practice, this uh, method will also change another part of the state because we'll set the mod to view. Um, because after we add or edit an exam, we, can, we should close the form below. And so the mod will, will go back to the normal viewing of the elements. So these are just the uh, the simple um, uh, the simple cases, the simple operation that we can do on top of the existing exam. Mm -hmm. uh, just one detail before we, we move to other components. Uh, uh, you see that uh, I call these APIs, uh, but for the moment these are just really fake APIs uh, because I implement an API module that just stores some arrays. Uh, and uh, I'm faking the, the, the asynchronous call just by return, returning this fake array. Of course, next week uh, we'll work on this part uh, and we'll try to integrate uh, the, the React uh, front-end application with the back-end application API that will uh, give us really this information. So right now, uh, you see that if you declare an asynchronous function and return a value, uh, this value will be wrapped inside a promise and this promise will be immediately fulfilled. So from the point of view of the application, you don't notice that this is not a real promise because actually a, a very quick uh, uh, promise is already created by you. But uh, uh, in the next week, we will uh, um, change it and we'll use uh, the fetch API to really uh, uh, get information from the database. Okay, but for the moment, uh, we are just playing with this uh, set of uh, initial data, initial values that are not uh, really real. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, after that, uh, um, okay, uh, these are the two methods that are able to manipulate the exams component of the state. And uh, who is going to call these methods? When do we need uh, to delete an exam, for example? Or when do we, know, do we need to uh, add or edit an exam? Well, we need to do that. Uh, here, for deleting an exam, the, uh, the component that needs to call the delete method is, for example, this trash bin button here. And uh, this component is inside, in our diagram, is inside the, um, the row controls component. So the row controls component will contain an icon, a button, that needs to call the delete exam method here. So <clears throat> this means that uh, the row controls uh, needs uh, to have access to the delete exam method. And of course, it needs to have access to the exam, which is represented in this current line, because this is the exam that, we meet, that needs to be deleted, uh, well, and also mod to decide whether to display itself or not. And also, if I'm clicking on the edit, uh, I need uh, to call this require edit exam, which is another uh, method uh, that is exposed uh, by the uh, app uh, that will uh, open the form for editing the exam, basically. So these are methods that are defined at the app level and they are needed at the row controls uh, level, inside the row controls component. 
so we assume that row controls is able to receive these properties exam and uh, the delete exam function which is a functional property no? it's a method which is passed down as a component uh, how can it do that well it, it, it can if we look at the exam um, row controls it's very simple it's just uh, uh, it's, a, um, it's just some two icons here that are wrapped into span elements and these span elements are associated with an on-click event handler so whenever we click on the icon we are calling the delete exam function uh, in this case we are wrapping the delete exam uh, function uh, event handler into another uh, arrow function because uh, uh, we need to pass some parameters uh, to the delete exam uh, uh, function so we need to create uh, uh, so the, um, the event render will not be delete exam itself it will be this arrow function that will then call delete exam with a specific uh, argument uh, which is taken from the properties so uh, all this work uh, is needed because uh, the uh, this delete icon will be able to call this delete exam method and we have just saw that delete exam is the method that will just uh, modify the state uh, by removing one item mm -hmm. so this is what uh, uh, we we need uh, what we want we have uh, one component that has a state and offers some state manipulation methods and another component somewhere else uh, among its children uh, that needs to call that method and needs to call that method and also needs to receive some properties that will be useful in calling the method for example and so this is the role of the of all the other uh, uh, components in the middle how can how can uh, the row controls receive uh, a reference to the delete exam method but just because it's a property and this property has been given to it uh, by exam row and you see that in fact exam row has a delete exam property that will be passed down to row controls and how can exam row know about this property well because it got a reference from its father exam table and how the exam table knows about that well because it received a reference from its father exam scores that also have a reference to delete exam that will be passed as a property to exam table that will be passed to exam row and so on and finally exam scores receive this reference by delete exam by uh, by the app delete exam here hmm? so we have uh, one place where the function is defined we have a different place where the function needs to be called and everybody in between is just passing the information so uh, we shouldn't be scared about all these new properties in this diagram uh, because what matters is where the function is defined and where the state is defined also and on the other hand where the function is used everything is in between is just for copying the values so it seems that all of these classes really have a lot of uh, methods but in most of them uh, they don't use this method don't use these properties except for passing them down hmm? so let's try not to get confused about uh, these too many properties it's just the beginning and the end and everything in the middle is just uh, doing this sort of props drilling uh, as they say that they're uh, punching hole through hole through all uh, across the components un until you reach uh, uh, the place where the component or the property is really needed hmm? we can see it in the code also if we take the app uh, in the render method uh, is passing delete exam uh, to the exam scores and see that this dot delete exam is uh, really my method is the new method that has been defined here for this object uh, is being passed as a property to exam scores and exam scores will uh, pass it as a, as a property to exam table you see that i'm receiving delete exam and i will pass this delete exam as a property to exam table inside the exam table i do the same i receive a property delete exam the syntax is different in this case it's this dot props because i implemented this one as a as a, um, as a class component instead of a functional component but it's the same um, information and is passed as a property delete exam to to exam row and exam row uh, will pass uh, the property delete exam 
as the new property delete exam again to row controls that is the location where this function is really used so we see a lot this pattern a lot uh, in, in most of the uh, of the classes hmm, that, we, that we see and for the, what happened for deletion is also happening for um, for the editing of an exam where we have this uh, uh, method require edit exam and uh, require edit uh, uh, will just uh, open a new form uh, with the, the copy of the information about the current exam and uh, if we go back to the app so we know that there are all these intermediate levels uh, this require edit exam is very simple and strange but it's very simple it will just change the mode to edit and changing the mode to edit will reconfigure the interface will make the form appear uh, will make the plus button disappear and so on and it will be specifying that the uh, exam to be edited is this one so we are taking uh, this information exam that comes from the very bottom it comes from, from the control elements uh, is passed down uh, to um, a function defined at the very top uh, in the app uh, module and um, in this case it's very uh, it's very easy to do in, in this way um we we need to change the way we're thinking ab uh, about the application uh, what we should be thinking is that uh, okay when the user clicks on edit i need to open the form but this component cannot open the form this component has no control over the form uh, we should stop thinking in an imperative way what i need to do uh, we should start thinking about the functional way uh i don't i will not say i need to open the form but i should ask myself with what is the state variable that will control the opening of the form and so i should ask that state variable to change to be changed hmm? uh, and the consequence of changing the state variable will be the opening of the form but what i'm focused on should be the state variable that you need to affect and I know the consequence of, this, the, of that state variable. I will never, I never need to talk uh, with the form. I need to uh, preload the form with information about the exam. Well, but this row control and the exam form data cannot speak to each other. There's no way. The only way is that we can give to uh, the component managing the state also the information about which exam needs to be edited and uh, of course the uh, required editor will receive an instance of exam and will reuse it and will co sorry, and will communicate it to uh, to the form and so that the form can initialize itself uh, with the with the correct value for the new exam hmm? so it's this sort of uh, two-step uh, information exchange that is something that we, we need to learn we need to think in these terms hmm? Uh, but it, at the end it makes uh, things more um, much easier as, as we see the implementation we don't need to here open the form initialize the form or whatever this is something for the form okay to do it's not something that we need to do ourselves uh, uh, in the components or in the state management app needs to manage the state that's it uh, the control buttons in the rows need to activate the functions that's it the form will need to render itself in the proper way according to the mod and the edited exam uh, variables that it will receive so in, we are uh, dividing and partializing the information okay so if we now go back to the to the lower part of the picture so more or less we we uh, we saw how the upper part of the diagram works uh, the, the table controls really work in the same way it's just the plus button that uh, uh, calls the open exam form we can see it in the code it's very quick uh, the, uh, uh, the table oh, how it's called sorry table controls component table controls is here it's just uh, the um, the plus button for which i added a non-click event handler that will call uh, open exam form and of course open exam form uh, you guess uh, will just modify the mod open exam form will just modify this, the mod in the status and will nullify 
the uh, edited exam so that the um, the form will not preload any information on that okay uh, let's move as we mentioned uh, to the lower part of the table uh, the lower part of the of this diagram is uh, the form actually hmm? and uh, uh, what we see here is uh, is a different pattern because the exam form actually has some state to manage hmm? while the the upper part of the diagram there is no state all the state is in the application because this is the application state in the exam form we have some variables one two three course code store and date at least these three uh, that we need to manage locally because we are uh, managing a form and uh, the elements of the form must be controlled hmm? so the con the state associated to an html form should be contained into a component uh, which is a sort of a manager a controller component for the form element and uh, so we we have the same idea here which are the information that we need to manage these three are the information about a single exam that we need to store here in this exam form and then we need to provide the methods for updating this information for doing something with this information and basically since there are just uh, a variable for forcing the state for handling the state of form components uh, uh, the, the method that we need to do is uh, the, the operation that we need is to keep them updated mm -hmm. so there will, there will be a strong interaction between this exam form which is managing the state of the form and the form data which uh, is uh, displaying the form elements themselves and uh, there is this function update field which is called here but is defined here uh, will uh, uh, do all the updates and then we have the other methods that are more related to the submission of the form but first let's first focus on the on the elements okay this this upper part of these two elements uh, exam form is a complex component right now exam form was you remember that in the first version we didn't have this company uh, this component uh, but now we really need it it's a uh, because we need to manage the state is a class component because it needs to manage the state and the state uh, is made of uh, uh, the three attributes that describe an exam um, this line is a bit complex because we must uh, uh, consider both cases so the first case is when uh, the form is opened with an exam already pre-compiled and the second in which the form is opened with empty values for inserting new exam for the edit and for the um, edit and for the insert uh, operations mm -hmm. so in, we need to, to to initialize it in a different way um, in this case uh, i'm just mentioning that uh, i'm using a, a, a bad pattern a bad uh, pattern but I, uh, you see that i am copying into the state uh, some properties that they receive okay so this usually is not a thing that is uh, uh, recommended to do in, in react uh, copying properties into state uh, may be dangerous but dangerous in why well because the, this copy of the properties into the state uh, only happens at the constructor time of course we are inside the constructor and the constructor in the life cycle is only called once this means that if the fo uh, the props uh, will change over time the state will not be updated so the state will get a copy of the props when the component is created but then the state will be totally um, decoupled from these props and so we, we will not be able to change the state from outside because even if we change the props the prop will trigger a re-render but will not call the constructor again and so there is no copy uh, that will happen anymore um in this case this is not a, a big problem but in other cases it can be a problem there are solutions for that uh, this operation of uh, um, um, deriving the state from properties remember this string deriving the state from property because if you look on, look up on google you find a lot of articles that describe the problem and find uh, and explain you the solution i will not sp uh, the solution is a bit more complex than this uh, and so I, I didn't want to put too much complexity in this exercise so let's keep it here if, even if we know 
that is not a good practice in general hmm? but for this application it's so simple that it works uh, in general we'll try to see the solution later on um, but so we are initializing the state and uh, we need to provide you know, all the methods for updating the states uh, basically the state is made of a course code so we should have a method for updating the course code that will see the course code and will change this this uh, component of the state another method for the score another method for the date but of course uh, if we are careful and we give uh, the same name to the state components and to the html elements we can collapse all of them into one method that they call the update field that will just uh, uh, dynamically compute the property name here and uh, uh, assign a value mm. so this update field is a substitute for all the update methods uh, for the different properties so again i have a state here i have a method for updating the state who is calling the method for updating the state well my children one of my children so if we go into render we see that uh, the render method will uh, render an exam form data component uh, and uh, this component will uh, um, receive uh, of course a, a copy of the state variables in the packed in, in into an exam object and then um, also this update field variable uh, again uh, if we go inside uh, we see that we have uh, uh, all the html uh, code all the real form elements uh, that we'll go we'll see in, uh, uh, in more detail in a moment uh, but we see that they are calling update field hmm? update field update field update field on the on change event hmm? so again the same pattern is repeating here uh, we are we are defining a state here we are defining one method in this case for updating the state and we are passing the reference to this method to this component and also to the lower level components uh, to the event tenders that will call the method uh, so it's the same pattern again define the method the state here define the method the handler pass the handler down and call the handler uh, when the, um, the correct event uh, will uh, will end so let's have um, a better look at the, uh, how these uh, form components are implemented. Uh, for example, we have the, um, the easiest one, which is the, uh, the score component, which is uh, simply an input that will receive a value and the onChange method. So these are the ingredients for creating a controlled component. Hmm? A control component in React is a component whose state is always managed by the controlling component by the component above it so this input element contains a score 28 and uh, this number is uh, injected into the the input box uh, by the state property so it's injected by react um, if the user tries to change something uh, nothing will change so the number will cannot be changed uh, if you try to delete the unchanged method, you will see that. You will uh, see that the, the, the value is stuck and there is no way you can modify it because it's being uh, injected by the external, by the outside, into the element. The only way to uh, change this element is to ask the controlling component pl to please change it. So I'm calling the update field uh, function that will update the state in the upper component the state will be used for defining the properties that they received and so i will receive a new property a new score property that will be used then to update the value so this is very quick of course we don't notice it but every time we we, we type a key this key is used to um, to create an event with a new value ah, with the updated value of the form this new value is being sent to the component managing the state this component will call set state asynchronously the state will be changed and uh, uh, a re-render is triggered on the top level component that will change in property that will re-render the bottom components until uh, the real uh, value is uh, updated and you can see the change mm -hmm. um, so everything is controlled by the controlling component in react uh, and is not uh, uh, uncontrolled or left uh, to the html element 
Um, this is uh, for the input element. Uh, it's the same for the select element, which is a bit more complex, uh, but the value is here, is set in the select, uh, and the on change is also defined uh, here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you see that uh, all the elements are, have the, the right name. So the, this one is called course code, this one is called score, and this one is called uh, name equal to date which are, of course, the same identical names uh, that we have uh, in the uh, form, uh, exam form. Why is that? Uh, in the exam form component, uh, exam for, I see, yeah, sorry. In the exam form component, uh, the, the exact same names are course code, score, and, and date. Uh, and this identity of name is what makes the update fields uh, function work correctly okay so uh, this is normally what happens in these uh, um, HTML forms uh, we must be careful um, we must be exam form data uh, when we create all this HTML code uh, we must be careful about all the HTML formatting like we already did uh, in the past uh, so you see that com compared to the previous version, the only difference here is that we added some value and unchanged uh, properties, okay? Uh, and we, you must not uh, have the default value property that's only used for uncontrolled components. So there are really two different words. The uncontrolled component have a default value and don't have anything else for interact interacting with React, while the uh, control component must have value and unchanged always defined. And or of course, I have other details here, like uh, we disabled the the, um, the select uh, um, menu in the edit mode, so that I cannot change exam when I'm just editing the score. And why in insert mode it's not disabled, so it will be enabled, and so on. But these are just details. Uh, we have uh, the validation component, the validation information for the input score, and so on. So this is the uh, state about the, the, the exam form, hmm? the state components uh, that are here. And then, of course, the exam form will also manage the submission of the information. So I want to actually cancel, or I want to modify, or I want to insert an exam. Cancel, of course, is easier. Do cancel, it's a method that we define at the level of form, and of course, it's uh, passed down to the uh, exam for control. Remember, the, the exam form controls uh, represents uh, this bottom part, these two buttons here. So if I click cancel, should just close without anything special. And uh, canceling, uh, you can guess it's very easy. Uh, we, if we start from the exam form control, I'm linking the cancel method to the on click event. And this cancel will call, sorry, will call the, uh, do cancel method on exam form so let's see it on exam form the do cancel method is here that will just call cancel exam that will go up cancel exam is just a property here that is given from the optional exam form and will be defined into the up cancel exam is here and we just we saw that uh, restores the mode uh, to view and so the clause the, the form will re-render itself in uh, in an invisible way so it will decide not to render itself anymore so we're just changing this state and will restore everything else um, okay uh, the, a bit more complex is the insert uh, button so when uh, uh, we want actually to uh, to insert the new exam and we see that in the exam form controls uh, this button can maybe called insert or maybe called modified uh, modify uh, depending on the state uh, on how the, the form was called um, but in both cases it will call the insert function the insert function is defined here uh, in the exam form uh, as the um, we call it here insert calls uh, um, do insert exam here okay props.insert comes from exam form uh, let's see how it's defined yes, sir. 
insert yes is calling do insert exam with information about the state so a do insert exam is a function so when i click on the insert or modify button i'm calling this do insert exam and do insert exam will not immediately call the uh, insertion method uh, that we have in app uh, that we already saw before the edit or add uh, exam because we first need uh, to validate uh, the, um, the form mm -hmm. uh, the, the data that every every info, every component is um, is present every mandatory field is present uh, and the value is correct and so on so before calling the add or, ed or edit exam which is the real method of the application that will really update the state we need to validate the data and at this point we have two options in a really fully controlled form all the validation should be made by react mm -hmm. react is responsible uh, for holding the state we know the state and we know whether it's valid we need to check the validity of the state and if something's wrong uh, we will change some properties so that we can render uh, the error messages below hmm? so usually this should be the way uh, uh, we have we have the state and uh, when the user wants to save this information we first validate it um, we can use for example the validate uh, library which is also mentioned in the slides um, this is the same that we used in express some weeks ago uh, to help us with the validation but basically it's uh, work that we should do in react mm -hmm. and this is the, the normal way for making it quicker in this exercise i chose a different uh, way i chose to exploit the validation that the browser is already able to do uh, we already saw in the html5 uh, with the basic javascript uh, uh, that all the validation was done uh, most of the validation was done with uh, the javascript uh, with the html attributes minimum maximum required and so on and the form element already has all the methods able to trigger this validation mechanism the problem is that how can we uh, from our react code how can we trigger some methods that are defined on the html form element uh, we, we don't have a reference to the element so we can we cannot call those methods uh, let's have a look at this code i'm calling this dot form dot check validity uh, check validity is a is a method of the html form element so it's a method a real method of the real dom hmm? uh, the check validity already gives me a boolean value true or false whether the form is valid or not and the report validity is a method that will uh, um, add the error messages uh, to the form in the right places so the browser will show you the messages the the red border uh, the other border and so on uh, so these are useful for us at this moment for the time for the type of validation that we need uh, in this exercise how can we call them oh i call them on some form element but the form should be real really the dom node so we should get a reference to this form node uh, uh, from the DOM that we create hmm? uh, this can be done with the so-called refs hmm? this dot form is uh, initialized here you see that I'm creating a form element I'm specifying a form a react element and I specify the property ref ref is a way of getting of, of uh, passing to the react code a reference to the real DOM node there are two slides uh, where we saw we show the two different methods for defining a reference to a node i just chose this one which is the, the older one uh, that ad will be executed at mounting time so when this form is really mounted on the dom i have the fo this form variable this form parameter to the function to the other function is the reference to the real dom node and this reference to the real dom node is being saved into the component into a property of the component so through this ref the component knows a reference to the real dom node and in this case it can call some function delegate some action to the dom level this uh, in in this case when we are using a reference uh, we are making an, an, a sort of uncontrolled component we are not controlling it anymore because some part of its execution of its behavior is determined by the browser or by the code itself and not uh, by, by react anymore so we should be careful 
when we are doing that uh, and we should know what we are doing should be confined in very little part of the code uh, because it will break the, the the react model don't do that at a shortcut always uh, but should do that only when uh, when you really evaluated the, the different alternatives and show that uh, uh, you have a component that has an, insert, an internal behavior that cannot be replicated or in this case is too costly or too boring to replicate at the react level and so you just delegate to the component um, so i wanted also to add this uh, example here how to get to the real node when we need some functionality that is not provided at the, at, at the react level hmm? otherwise we just have to do a, a set of, uh, of checks to do here on the not on the component not on the form but on the state because all the information that uh, is in the in the form and for which check validity is is uh, is running is already in the state of the component we already have everything here so what you should we should need to validate is the current value of state which is not so difficult because we don't need to interact with the form anymore or in this case i just delegate to the form and i ask the form to do everything for me and i think this uh, everything we need to know about the form uh, except that uh, i i sh you should also remember always uh, to um, define an handler for the on submit event uh, and in this handler you should always try to call the prevent default uh, because if you don't prevent the default when you are clicking on a submit button then the form is submitted and the page is reloaded and your application is destroyed so uh, it's, uh, it's annoying uh, because it's not done uh, automatically but uh, always try to remember to prevent the default submission of the form mm -hmm. um, all the rest are just details or how to make the the default values working for so for example mm -hmm. uh, the input elements that don't accept a null a null as a parameter but they want an empty string if it's empty and so on so i i must confess that i lost a lot of time in trying to get all the form behavior right uh, probably most of the than the time that i spent uh, for uh, making all, all the rest of the application just just because uh, there are a lot of small details and forms uh, are complex uh, are complex uh, objects uh, by themselves mm -hmm. so um, they have they have a complex behavior and they are in many cases picky about uh, uh, the values of the of the variable that they received uh, another example uh, with the form is uh, uh, the date input uh, the date the input uh, here uh, is not able to receive the, as a value an object of type date because you only want to receive a string formatted in a very specific way here in the iso format year month date uh, without any type component otherwise it doesn't work so i had to modify the application uh, all the application for using strings instead of dates uh, because otherwise the interaction of the state update uh, didn't work uh, uh, with the component so either it didn't get the default value or it didn't uh, update uh, when when the user selected mm -hmm. so it was very complex uh, and at the end i decided to work with strings uh, which is very sad the, the the good thing to do would be to work with dates uh, everything outside the form and then add another layer of uh, translation so I have, I have a double state the date is a string and the date is a object and uh, in the event in the event handler of the of the form class uh, 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 try to update both uh, whenever the form changes it will be extra work so i didn't want to do this because i want to try to keep it simple but the idea is that if we have some component that needs some low level information we should probably try to hide this low level into um, a, a wrapper that will offer to the outside a, a much cleaner interface yeah. made of objects instead of strings mm -hmm. but uh, this is uh, of course uh, we have to deal with the internal intrinsic behavior of forms uh, and there should be some some trade-offs and some compromises that should we should strike uh, to to get a good uh, a good functional behavior of the application overall so this uh, uh, most, uh, mostly concludes our overview of the application. You have the code, you can check it. If you find some errors, some mistakes, please uh, tell us so that we can, we can correct them. If there are some aspects that are not clear, of course, we'll try to, to clarify, uh, try to uh, have an idea about this uh, module and this, this representation 
uh, and why no why the, a property is, is here because it's defined because it's used or because it's just passing passed over so these are the three cases and uh, where uh, we are just passing over some information where we are uh, doing some computation like for example the validation like here or where we are really handling some local state so we see that in this application we have two places where we are holding state the app component which is where the application state lives all the data the data model i would say is managed there and the state that we have in exam form is a local state it's a state that is available just to manage some components and to pre uh, to um, to present some uh, interface mm -hmm. so it's a local presentational state uh, that is able to manage some part of the page uh, also from the graphical point of view with uh, all the validation messages and so on um, so in your application always try to think whether the state is a application state the model of your application or the state is just something that is needed for managing or to, for improving the local behavior of a part of the application so in that in this case all this state management is not interesting doesn't is not needed anywhere else in the application it's only needed here but all the rest of the application doesn't care about that because when it cares uh, is when uh, you are calling the add or delete exam not in this case only the add with the information about the exam so everything that comes out from that part of the code is the exam object that we need to <coughs> add or modify you see and so all the other details about and the, all the complexity about managing the state here and managing the form are just uh, needed for locally making this part work and so this is a local part of the application that uh, this state is not uh, is not shared with the rest of the application so that's why we always mentioned application state versus local or presentational state in our applications okay so i hope you are having fun in having a look at this code uh, you're not too scared about the uh, apparent complexity because as we said uh, most of the complexity lies uh, at the top or at the bottom and then in, the, in the middle we are just passing values over and uh, also i also hope you will have fun when you are trying to repeat the same exercise for the lab of this week on your to-do list and thank you and see you soon.